What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on ACT Math. If you're taking the upcoming ACT, these are 22 formulas that you gotta know to nail the math portion of the ACT. The first formula on the list is slope of a line, which of course is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. The y's and the x's represent x and y values of two coordinates of a line. All you gotta do is plug in those respective coordinates and calculate the slope. The next equation on the list is slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is the ultimate and most important formula for the equation of a line. The m value represents the slope of the line and the b value represents the y-intercept, which of course is where this line intersects the y-axis. Next on the list is the midpoint formula. This tells you how to calculate the midpoint of a line segment. And it's simply x1 plus x2 divided by two, comma, y1 plus y2 divided by two. But the best way to think about this formula is you're simply taking the average of the x and y values of the two endpoints. Next on the list is the distance formula, which is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Again, find your two points, plug them in, and this will give you the distance between those two points on a coordinate plane. Next, we have the circumference of a circle. This is a relatively short formula, but an important one nonetheless. The circumference is simply 2 pi r, where r is the radius of a circle. Next on the list is area of a circle. And again, area is simply pi r squared, where r is the radius of a circle. Next on the list is length of an arc, which is tied back to the formula for circumference. Because again, we're simply taking a piece of the circumference. The formula here is the central angle divided by 360 degrees times 2 pi r. Next on the list is area of a sector, and this is tied back to the area of a circle. And what we're doing here is we're taking that central angle that cuts out the sector, divide it by 360 and multiply by pi r squared, where of course, again, r is your radius. The next formula on the list is one of the most important in algebra, and that is the quadratic formula. This formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. It is imperative that you have this formula down, memorized when test day arrives. Next on the list, we have an acronym that is essential to understanding and learning how to use the three trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, and that acronym is SOCA TOA. And again, that stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Next on the list is probability, which is a very straightforward formula. It is simply the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. Next, we have the circle equation on a coordinate plane, and they love to test on the nuances and details about how to figure out where's the center and where's the radius based on the equation. So the formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h and k represent, of course, the center of the circle and that r value represents the radius. Next, we have the formula for exponential growth, where our a value represents our starting point point, R represents the percent rate at which this quantity is growing, and of course T is time, usually number of years. Next on the list is the formula to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. A sub n represents the nth term you're trying to find, A sub 1 represents the first term in the sequence, D represents the common difference in the sequence, and of course N represents the number of the term in the sequence that you're trying to find. Next we have the formula for a geometric sequence. And in this formula, a sub n again represents the nth term of the sequence. a sub 1 represents the first term. r represents the common ratio. And of course, n represents the number of the term that you're trying to find. Next on the list, we have the formula for the vertex of a parabola, which is simply negative b over 2a. 
So if you have a quadratic in that nice standard formula, you simply take negative b over 2a and that will give you the x value of the vertex of the parabola. Next, we have our conversion formula from degrees to radians. Again, degrees and radians are sort of like Fahrenheit and Celsius. If I wanna convert degrees to radians, I simply do the value of the degrees times pi over 180. Next on the list is vertex form for a quadratic. This is a really important formula to know because if you look at this formula, you can immediately tell where the vertex is. The vertex is simply going Going to occur at h comma k. Number 19 is an oldie but a goodie, one of the most important formulas in geometry, Pythagorean's theorem. Pythagorean's theorem is simply a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the legs of a right triangle and c is the hypotenuse. Next on the list is logarithms. What you need to know is how to convert back and forth between a logarithmic equation and its equivalent exponential equation. Moreover, you're gonna to wanna to know these two operations when we are adding logarithms as well as subtracting logarithms. Next on the list is the formula for the area of a triangle, which is simply one half base times height. This is likely a formula that you learned years ago, but just make sure that you have it down when going into the test. Last but not least, we have special right triangles, and these are super important to have down. The first one is a 45, 45, 90, and you can see the ratios of the side are x, x, and the hypotenuse is x square root two. We also have a 30, 60, 90, and you'll notice here that the side opposite the 30 degree angle is the smallest side, that's our x. The side opposite the 60 is x square root three, and of course the hypotenuse is two x. I hope this video helps you to achieve your optimal score on the math portion of the ACT. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.